for joining Libertarian Counterpoint. With me today is my favorite author, and who should be your favorite author, Mr. John Cameron. <laughs> you know, John, we don't talk about the election and the kind of the politics of the day very much. We try to discuss other things. But tonight is not one of those nights. Mm. Tonight we're going to kind of dive into some of the anti-journalism that has been happening in, in recent... Some journalism that's actually anti-journalism. Yeah, yeah. Well, pretend journalism, or it doesn't even matter anymore, I, I guess. Yeah. So, but anyway, CBS did an uh, interview, right? If, if mm. I'm remembering which scandal we're talking about tonight correctly. Mm. Um, CBS did an interview with Kamala Harris that they, shall we say, massively edited so her answers were different than the answers she gave during the live, mm. the live interview. Mm -hmm. If I did I get that one correct, John. Yeah, and, <laughs> and they, they called their journalist, who was their fave, this guy right here, um, to task because it's Tony, what is that, Duke Appeal? Duke, Duke Appeal? Something, I don't know, Duke Appeal? Um, uh, to task because he asked her questions about her answers instead of kissing her butt. And, um, but they didn't talk about any specifics. They, they just in general terms said, you're, you don't, you're not uh, keeping uh, the, our high journalistic standards. And apparently their high journalistic standards mean they get high when they make those standards because they basically wanted her to, uh, um, or wanted him to just uh, be a cheerleader and, and not call her on any of the stuff. So they massively censored what's supposed to be an interview with a presidential candidate. No, so I'm going to disagree with you here for a second, John. Yeah. Um, I don't think even Snoop Dogg could get high enough to make this as a journalistic standard. I don't know what the heck they were smoking. I, crack? <laughs> because it, it doesn't make sense. I know crackheads that would know this is not right. This is the wrong thing to do. Well, you can't call it journalism. So this is yeah. this is activist culture gone haywire, yeah. right? Yeah. Our journalists, in air quotes, we'll use the journalists in air quotes, are really activists in nature for, and for a certain political perspective. Yeah, yeah. And if and when they don't do that, they get thrown under the bus. Yeah. So when they actually yeah. act like a journalist, like they actually should have learned in journalism school. Mm -hmm they are now getting thrown under the bus. And we mm -hmm. wonder why our media is the way it is. Mm. I mean, yeah. And then the, the other side of that is the, is the story from Wired, yeah. And they're part of the Vox. I don't, I, I, I sent them, I, I used to take Wired because they did some good tech stuff. Yeah. But they're basically uh, just so full of uh, anti-libertarian, anti-conservative, pro-socialism, pro-green, pro-democratic party fluff that it's really hard to read any of their stories because they bring them out of the left field and throw them into all their tech stories. I don't know why. And they despise uh, uh, Musk, Elon, because he's not towing the line and because he fired probably 7,500 of their friends or whatever it was who weren't doing anything when they worked for Twitter, fired three-quarters of the workforce, and it's actually more efficient than it was before. Yeah, there was a bunch of... It was bloated. As we we're finding out, all of those tech companies were bloated. They're bloated. laying off thousands of people. Because well, if you can, if you can lay off fifteen percent of your workforce, and keep your doors open, still keep delivering product, then the the CEO and board of directors should be fired because they didn't realize that they had. Because labor is always your most expensive expense in tech, because basically everything else is free. I mean. You got some server farms and yeah, some stuff server like farms that. cost a good yeah. deal of of of, of inve capital of, and, initial and investment. And energy, which we're going to talk about. And the yeah. energy costs, yeah. but but you know the uh, so this story, uh, Elon Musk said tongue in cheek. He he tweeted it out. He said, uh, "Well, uh, how come nobody's trying to assassinate Biden or Harris?" And what he meant was. They're idiots. You know why would why would you know anybody want to assassinate him? But you can't tweet stuff outside of context. It's like yeah. texting people and expecting them to get sarcasm. It just doesn't do it. And he apologized for it and pulled it. And, and so all of these people who are on the lefty bandwagon uh, said, oh, he should go to court for that. He should be put in jail for that. That's, a, that's uh, uh, calling people, asking people, telling people to assassinate the president. And, I'm thinking, he did nothing of the sort. He made a little tongue-in-cheek joke about it. And I'm going to be, we're going to be consistent here. What was her name, the, the comedian who held up the severed Trump head? 
right? Oh, yeah. It was tasteless, but Kathy, she had every right to do it. Kathy somebody? Yeah, okay. Kathy somebody. It was tasteless. Oh, and, oh, and she's, she's hilarious. Cassie Griffin. Cass, yeah, Kathy Griffin, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, it, again, we were going to repeat this. It was completely tasteless. Oh, yeah. But she had every right to do it. Yeah. And I, if I remember correctly, we defended her right to do it. Yeah, and she can be funny. But in that case, you know, just because... You know, just because it's anti-Trump doesn't mean it's funny. I mean, you don't really, all you got to do is let his, anything him speaking run for about two minutes and he'll crack anybody up. You don't yeah. even need to make fun well, of him. Well, this is the thing. It was funny to her audience, yeah. which is fine. Yeah. And the rest of us found it tasteless. Mm. And I found it tasteless. That, that's what yeah. and if, and if freedom Trump, is about. You know, if, if Trump for that, that harmless little tongue-in-cheek tongue, tongue uh, tweet... Uh, is in the doghouse, why wasn't she in prison? Right. You know, because holding up a severed head of somebody is is certainly, you know. Or repeatedly calling people fascists and dangers to society. Dangers to democracy, to, yeah. To, to, yeah, and yeah. to the future. And yeah. not just Trump, you're talking about all of his supporters. They, they right. do that. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think they're, their hypocrisy and kind apparently of Apparently, if you're a black man display. and you don't vote for Kamala, you're a pookie. And I didn't even know what a pookie was. I still don't know what that is. I don't know what it is. A uh, guy tried to explain it to me, and he said, basically, it's like a uh, crackhead, you know, a useless, useless black man who just hangs out in the ghetto in, a, in his own trash. So it's okay to insult black men as long as you're not voting for the Democrat. Yeah. 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 Well, something else I don't understand, or maybe you guys don't understand, Mr. Richard Fields is talking tariffs this week. Tariffs. Tariffs. Yeah. And, you know, tariffs are a strange yeah. beast. So you let's Ready? Yeah. Well, I'll talk about it afterwards. Hi, this is Richard Fields with this week's report from the fields. The Republican and Democratic parties have traded constituencies. The Democrats used to be the party of the laboring class and less educated. The Republican Party used to be the party of the well-educated suburbanites. No more. Under Trump, Republicans are targeting their message to the working class with messages of fear of immigrants and the miraculous ability of tariffs to rebuild America's industrial might. Democrats are using the abortion issue to strike fear into the hearts of college-educated suburban women and claims of Republican racism to virtue, sig virtue signal their bona fides as supporters of our democracy. Let's examine the issue of tariffs. The main argument for tariffs is that they will protect American businesses from competition from foreign rivals and increase jobs domestically. They will do that, but in economics, there are always trade-offs. With tariffs, there are at least four. One, importers to the United States will increase their price to the consumer to cover the, uh, at least a portion of the cost of the tariff prices will rise. Two, domestic producers will raise their prices to match the price of imported goods. That raises prices to the consumer also. It allows for either higher profits for the domestic producer or allows them to become more inefficient, or both. Three, foreign countries will retaliate by enacting tariffs on exports from the United States. The sales volumes of UX exporters will go down, offsetting the increased sales volumes of protected industries. Jobs gained in protected industries are washed out by job losses in exporting industries. Four, there are some things that are just naturally more efficient to produce overseas. Bananas come to mind. Yes, we could produce bananas in a greenhouse in North Dakota, but they would probably be a tad more expensive than bananas imported from Costa Rica. The other danger is that countries will be more likely to go to war. Trade and war are mutually exclusive. We tend not to try to kill our customers. Countries that trade together tend not to go to war with each other. Historically, this is demonstrated most obviously by the Smoot-Hawley Tariff Act of 1930. Enacted at the beginning of the Great Depression, it was intended to, in today's sloganeering, make America great again. Instead, it expanded or extended the Depression at least a decade and contributed to the tensions leading to World War II. More pertinent is the Trump's, Trump campaign's claim 
that the president can unilaterally enact tariffs. He can't. The Constitution clearly states that Congress has the power to, quote, lay and collect taxes, duties, imports, and excises, end quote. Unfortunately, just like in regulatory law, Congress has given away its power on taxes and imports and exports and tariffs. In 1962, it gave the president power to lay tariffs on imports that affect national security. In 1974, Congress gave the president the power to act in cases of, uh, of quote, unfair trade practices, end quote. So, in practice, the president can unilaterally impose tariffs. Trump did. Biden-Harris did not reverse any of the Trump tariffs. As a result, consumer prices are higher and will be higher going forward. Tariffs are effectively sales taxes on imported goods. The chance of war will be higher, too. Exporters and their employees will be hurt. Protected American industries will benefit, at least in the short run, and the defense industry will ultimately be helped a lot. Voting Democratic or Republican isn't going to change anything. Libertarian, anyone? That's this week's report from the fields. I'm Richard Fields. See you again next week. Yeah, he's a smart man. Yeah, you know, the only real argument for tariffs is, is direct retaliatory, right? They don't let you have access to your markets, so then you... you deny them access to yours yeah. or make it so incredibly expensive it's essentially denied access to yours. That's the only valid argument for a tariff. Mm -hmm. And even then, that's shaky ground because history has told us that often leads to war in the long term. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you've yeah. got to be very careful about using that tool. Well, and what's funny is that, that uh, at the beginning of the camp, this campaign cycle, um, the uh, Kamala in, in her camp or whoever writes the words that she tries to speak, um, they were in favor of tariffs, too. But then the, the New York Times writers pointed out the fact that tariffs are really bad. And this is a point that, that uh, Trump's on the bully pulpit about. We might be able to use it to get some votes. But since none of the voters understand that tariffs are bad, that Trump's gaining votes with it, but the, the Democrats trying to beat him up about it aren't gaining any votes beating him up because people just don't think it through. And again, you could say that, that the whole protectionist trade thing, uh, for sure it extended the Great Depression. I don't know if it was 10 years, but all the other stuff we did on top of it, our, we, the rest of the world fell apart like we did, but they recovered like that. We were the only ones that hadn't recovered from our financial malfeasance and misfeasance. Um, in 10 years, from 29 to, it really took like World War II to pull us, pull us out of it. And that's, you don't want to have to go to war. Maybe that's it, you know, we'll go to war and that'll pull us out of our, our doldrums. But I, I don't want to do that. Well, our yeah. doldrums this time are self-inflicted. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, well, they were then too. I mean, it's more, it's $35 trillion of debt. It, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a Probably by the time the show's over, it'll be 36. $36 trillion in debt. We're already paying more in debt service than we are for military. Yeah. So it, it's gotten That's insane. a good thing. We could, I, could, I could take out a sharp pencil and an eraser and get rid of half our military expenditures tomorrow. So, um, you know. Yeah. 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 But anyway, so the, the, both sides were gung-ho about tariffs, and then they thought maybe, you know, that... Uh, we could use this as a lever against Trump, but it's not working. Yeah, tariffs and taxpayers, right? We're gonna, so we're going to move on. Uh, Kamala Harris was doing another interview, right? And we talked about priority lists, mm. right? So what's her priority list? It, but is her priority at home, or is she going to continue sending more money overseas than she's willing to spend on, say, disaster relief here in the United States? And she did mm. not give a satisfactory... Charlemagne the God is Walter Cronkite's son, right? I'm kidding. I just some of these names I see people have, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. social media. You know how to, you got to make a splash in social oh, media yeah, somehow, yeah, yeah. and so that's how it starts. Yeah. And then, of course, ten years later, you're going. Now, what am I going to do with rebranding this to something mm. more reasonable? Yeah, because it's ridiculous. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. But again, she did not give as she she's been having trouble in interviews, right? Mm. She does not give clear, concise answers. It's it's <laughs> so, I, sometimes she, I'm not even sure what the heck she's trying to say, but I, in this particular case, you know, she did not give an answer that would, to the 
to fly over country is going to satisfy them. Mm. Right? Well, she's going didn't. to continue to send money over to the Middle East. She's going yeah. to continue to send money to Ukraine. She's going mm. to continue to send money to Africa while many communities are hurting. Mm. And, and, and there will be money for here, too, because we're just going to tax the trillionaires and the millionaires and the billionaires, which, are the, which you won't because they're the people who put her in power. So, um, and even if you took away all the billionaires' wealth in the U.S. to pay down, um, it'd only be a couple trillion dollars. You could take it all, destroy the economy and the people that actually produce goods and services, and it would just put a little dent in the debt. So it's, it's just bully pulpit stuff. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the real problem is, is those, those flower countries, because we know that those people, her, her, uh, Benefactors or benefactees, yeah. Yeah. you know those those nonprofits, the NGOs, yeah. all those companies that get money from grants from government grants. They will continue to get their money from government grants. Yeah. But the people in flyover country who need a new road yeah. or or who need a new sewer system, mm. they're not going to get it. Mm. And but you just, notice that every single road in the state of California is now being worked on. I mean, you can't go anywhere because no, the and get there on time done. because the, you can't go anywhere and get there because of freeway construction and they're not going to be better after than they were before it's a scam folks oh no and here on stockton boulevard they're going to take you know traffic gets backed up here on stockton boulevard and they're going to take it down from four lanes to two hmm. to improve traffic flow yeah, yeah go have that figures but you know government's making kind of confusing decisions john we're going to move on to elon musk's latest foe the california coastal commission and i've actually got a problem with this because it's actually not elon musk they're taking on the media is putting this out like it's Elon Musk that was asked to do this. It was not Elon Musk that asked to, to, to launch more rockets. It was the U.S. military mm. that asked the Coastal Commission to allow Elon Musk to have 14 more they, flights a year. They, they asked for their blessing because actually the California Coastal Commission can't do anything about what the U.S. Air Force does. The, the U.S. Air Force isn't under the purview of the, it, the California Coastal Commission. They can do whatever they want. They just want to get along with the California Coastal Commission. But the thing that bothers me most, well, the California Co Coastal Commission I despise because it's an independent regulatory agent agency made up out of thin air in the state of California, giving un given unlimited power. And it took, there's a, a uh, public interest law firm, a nonprofit called Pacific Legal Foundation, has sued them a whole bunch of times to try to roll that power back. But they do whatever they want. They took it upon themselves to decide that people shouldn't live by the Pacific Ocean, and they want to move people back from it. And I don't remember voting for that, folks. And besides that, that's illegal. You can't just take people's property from them. They made the decision not because of environmental concerns, although after the fact you're saying that. They stated in public because they made the decision based upon his political views and the fact that he's a Trump supporter. So um, there you go, folks. Yeah, they're not uh, even hiding it welcome, anymore. Welcome to the California Coastal Commission. And what's really interesting is how two different media organizations um, reported this. The, the Epic Times reported it pretty factually. It said California Coastal Commission uh, decided to uh, not grant uh, their, their blessing. They said approval, but they, they can neither approve or deny this because it's the Air Force. Um, and so uh, based on political means. When the politico.com spun it, they said, oh, the California Coastal Commission has, has, has had fight with rich billionaires before, and they're always one. You don't want to take on the California Coastal Commission. And they talked about uh, YouTube, uh, you, you, not YouTube, U2, uh, and uh, David Geffen or somebody wanted to build these compounds in Malibu, and they stopped them from doing it and fighting the billionaires, right? Yeah, that was about maybe environmental stuff. This is purely political. And, and again, the, the Air Force wants to get along with the Coastal Commission, but they don't have to. They can just tell them to go fly a kite. Yeah, they'll just launch the rockets anyway. Yeah. It's, like, it's not like the Coastal Commission is counting. Yeah, they don't it, have they don't have anti missile batteries set up down there to it, shoot down. It's just so rockets. silly that how that's how far how far California has fallen. Yeah. That we can't even make basic government decisions yeah. with, honestly without in, in driving 
partisan well, on the politics one hand, into it. You know, uh, Governor, what's his name? Gruesome? No, Newsom. Um, that was childish. Governor Newsom has said that, that um, California needs to be the heart of the space race. We need to, we need to be where uh, the future of space exploration is, and it's very important to us, and the jobs and the technology and the commerce, and, and he didn't say tax revenue, uh, needs to be here. Um, Elon's perfectly fine, probably, with doing all this stuff from Texas, and they'll welcome him with open arms. Yeah, he'll go to Texas, he'll, yeah. he'll build another ship, and he'll launch it from the, from the yeah. sea if he he'll has to. Fire a little South American country that's closer to the equator, which would probably be better to fire off missiles from rockets yeah. from England. He'll find a solution oh, if yeah. he needs it. But oh, yeah, in this yeah. particular case, they're not picking the fight with Elon. They're picking mm -hmm. the fight with the military yeah. while pretending to be picking the fight with Elon. And yeah. that's really irritating. All right, so we're going to move on. Three Mile Island. And we all heard about the Three Mile Island, the thing that scared everybody to death, mm -hmm. and you know, despite the fact that nothing actually happened, I mean, nothing disastrous. Nobody died. Nobody died. There was no Nobody massive died. leak. Mm -hmm. you know, no was, increases in cancer. Nobody died. But what it probably cost, the, the, there was the start of the crazy environmentalism. And some, the China Syndrome movie came out where there was a meltdown, and it melted down to the core. The, not going to happen. And then um, Jimmy Carter came up with this thing that said that you can't recycle nuclear material because at some point in the life cycle it becomes weapons grade. And folks, you weren't aware of that, that the French recycle 95% of their nuclear waste? You weren't aware that we have in our nuclear waste facilities just sitting there enough uh, nuclear material to power all the reactors that we could conceivably build in this country for the next 180 years. Uh, viewers, you weren't aware that just one wind farm, uh, Altamont Pass, has killed 1,000 uh, golden eagles, but I'll move on. So anyway, now, um, is it Amazon or Google or Microsoft is going to pay? I think it's pay. all three. Are, 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 this oh, yeah, one, they're I all think, going nuclear, but one of them is going to pay to have... I think have, this is Microsoft, but they're yeah, all doing some, uh, similar. Three Mile Island up and running again. Governor of New Jersey says... Get rid of any regulations that are stopping them. We want that power back on. We want the tax revenue. We want them to stay here. We want stable electrical power. Um, you know, basically, we were lied to about nuclear power. Uh, there's a great guy, Michael Schellenberger, who's done a wonderful TED talk about nuclear power. You've heard me rant about how good it is for years. And once again, listen to this, folks. You can feasibly, economically, and safely recycle 95% of nuclear fuel. We could take all those nuclear weapons that we have and mix them in with a little bit of low-grade uranium fuel and power all the nuclear reactors we could build in this country for the next 200 years. So we could basically have free power other than the cost of building the plant for the next 300 years? Maybe? Yeah, and, and the thing is, we, we got on this thing where we kill built any these, birds. We built these big, huge, massive nuclear power plants when France and Europe went the other way and built small ones, yeah. kind of regionally. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah. It, yeah. It makes, we made some wrong decisions, mm -hmm. and because of that, we kind of paid the price. Yeah. yeah. But it's coming back. It's coming back. Because yeah. it has to. It realistically, yeah. to, to feed the power needs, it's the only practical solution. Yeah. It's, it's, let's be honest. Now, these worldwide intervention of po politics into everything is kind of intervening in even babies. We have a baby shortage worldwide, John. Mm. Not if you go to an orphanage, we don't. But, you know, for these, a lot of these countries, especially the northern European countries, mm -hmm. and now even China is having a, us. a baby shortage. U.S.? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. We're, not, we're not replacing enough, right? Well, and, and, and you know, if uh, uh, I can point the finger at the doom and gloom from all these people that's, that, that said, like Ehrlich and all those people that said population bomb, they have scared people. All this radical environmentalism and all this woe is me about the future of the Earth. Something like 50% of young people think that the Earth is going to end, life on Earth as we know it is going to end in a few years because of global warming. And even the UN doesn't say that. But these, these fear mongers have said that. And people are scared to have kids. And also, a lot of people around now are really selfish well, and they've been, so, they've been you know. raised to be victims, and when yeah. you when you have a victim mentality, it, you're you're selfish because yeah. you yeah. you have to you're thinking you're always protecting yeah. yourself, yeah. and so yeah, they're going to be selfish because they've been raised to be victims, yeah. and now that they're victims, 
They don't they're not going to make the, babies. Yeah. They don't yeah. have the in, intestinal too fortitude. Too much trouble. Yeah. They lack the intestinal yeah. fortitude. Yeah. 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 All right, well, I wanna, we only got a couple minutes, John. I want to move on to this next subject. I want to get it in because this is a worldwide problem. It doesn't have just encouraged babies. It's encouraging our children. Um, one in three middle school students are failing math. This is in Africa, hmm. right? This was in, in Korea. I mean, sorry, not Africa, Korea. Yeah, Cor imagine Korea because they do great on math, don't they? Well, apparently even in Korea. They're getting it wrong. Yeah. Well, one in three middle school students are failing math and they're giving up. Yeah. And it's not just Korea, the United States. We've been dealing with this for years. Mm. So this, so what's the common thread is this massive government intervention into our education system. Well, that would be the way I'd say it. You said it the same way as me. Maybe you're a libertarian. <laughs> Maybe. But the, that's the thing, right? The more and more the governments have gotten involved, the worse and worse our educations have gotten. Yep. And it makes, it's no surprise to us here that this is what happens, right? Because when you remove the, what's the word I'm looking for, John? Incentive? No, but... It, freedom? Yeah, when you remove the freedom, I guess, it's not the word I'm looking mm. for, but, but it'll do. Parental you, um, input? Eh, no. I'll I'll, it'll it'll come to me at the end of the show, John. Yeah, watch. Yeah. It'll come to me. It, yeah. When you remove the ability or the to take care of yourself, mm -hmm. or when you remove the desire to take care of yourself, mm -hmm. You've removed the, the self-motivation. Mm -hmm. You've taken the self-motivation out. You no longer mm -hmm. are self-motivated to get an education. Mm -hmm. You go because you have to. Mm -hmm. And that is a vastly different experience than you doing something because you want to. Mm -hmm. And every child wants to learn. Yeah. They just do. That's a We're natural. Human, human beings, especially children, are learning machines. They love to learn. They love to master new skills. They love to challenge themselves. They love to be recognized and rewarded for doing well. Uh, they, they love to do well. And what happens now is people are shoved in this little box, like all kids that are nine years old. What was that, third, fourth grade? Yeah, third, fourth grade. About nine grade, nine, ten years old, something like that. Yeah, yeah. middle school. And, and you're all lumped in the same box, and you're all supposed to do the same work at the same time. And, and folks, the Constitution said, might say that we're all created equal. Or we're all, yeah. No, we're all equal human beings, but we are not all equal. No, no. Human and beings. if you're, if you're, <laughs> if you're equal, you're not free, and if you're free, you're not equal. And people uh, have different skills and advance at different times, and they learn things in different, at different stages of their life. And some people are better with words, and other with numbers. Right, John, we are out of time, and I just want to say, you know, what we do, to our kids, is we we put them in school. We say, here's ten words to learn. You feel, if you only learn five, you're a failure. And what can that do to the, to the Mm. I am just having losing psyche, the psyche, psyche of your child. Your, yeah. Your, yeah, whatever it is. Anyway, I can't talk tonight. You guys, we're out of here. Thanks for being here, John. Thank you guys for working inside. Thank you for watching. And please remember to love everybody and have a good I thank you night. for having me on.